Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and thank you so much for watching. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how I made this Sonic the Hedgehog themed cake, so let's get right into it. I'm starting out by making Sonic's head and I'm using a styrofoam ball for this because I want this to be super light. You could also use Rice Krispies, but I just don't recommend using straight up fondant or gum paste because you're going to have this big heavy ball and it might indent your cake. I've rolled out some blue fondant and I'm going to drape that over the ball and then just using my hands I'm going to smooth that out as best I can trying to get all the fondant to gather at the bottom. I flipped it over and then just using my fingers tried to gather it all together as best I could. I cut away the excess and then just rolled it in my hands to try to decrease the look of those seams. Sonic has two eyes that are basically joined together, so I've rolled out some white fondant and I just draped that over the ball and just marked in the rough area where I want the eyes to be. And then I cut those out. I just freehanded this. I looked at a picture. I will link the one that I used below and just did the best I could to replicate it. I apologize if you hear the background noise. It's my two rabbits and they're going ham on some hay right now and they're jumping around. So I'm trying to make them be quiet, but they're just not listening. I have some ivory that I've rolled out for his mouth and again I just draped that over the ball marked in where I wanted it to roughly sit and then I cut out the design based on the picture that I was looking at. The mouth sits right up against the eyes but I didn't want to have a line there from me draping the ivory over the white so I just trimmed away right where it would be meeting each other. Once the mouth was on there, I used a cocktail stick to mark in his little smirk. To rim his eyes, I rolled out a long snake of blue fondant and I just traced that around. I have some light green fondant for his eyes and I'm cutting out two long oval shapes. I cut out two smaller black oval shapes and put them in the middle of the green ones and then I added two small balls of white fondant into each eye for the catch light. I have this little jelly bean of black fondant and I attach that right at the top of his snout area using some water for his nose. Taking more of my blue fondant, I'm rolling that out and cutting out two ear shapes. And then I use some more of my ivory to cut out the little bits for the inner ear. Once I fit those together, I place them against my ball of blue fondant because I want them to dry in the shape that they're going to fit snugly against the head. I didn't attach those yet, I wanted them to be really solid before I glued them on. For his spiky hedgehog mohawk, I'm rolling out more of my blue fondant and then I'm eyeballing three spikes. It took me a couple times to get the right size. I just kept placing it against the head just to make sure they weren't too big or too small. And then once I was happy with it, I wrapped it around my head how I'd want it to sit. And again, I just put that aside to firm up before I tried to attach it. Once my ears and the mohawk dried, I attached them to the head using some piping gel. You could use some cocktail sticks and insert them in, but I'm going to reuse this styrofoam ball so I didn't want to damage it, but for the extra security you could absolutely do that. Now that my head is finished, I'm going to move on to my cake. So I have two 6 inch cakes that I've cut in half and I'm going to be filling that with some Swiss meringue buttercream. I'm using my small offset spatula to make sure my layers are even and once my cake is stacked up I'm going to apply a thin layer of buttercream all around the outside to act as a crumb coat and I'm going to place that in the fridge for about 25 minutes. Once you can touch your finger to the cake and none of the buttercream comes off, it's ready for the final ice. 
I'm piling some buttercream on top and using my spatula and my turntable. I'm just moving that around while keeping my spatula level to smooth out the top and to ensure that it's not going to be crooked. I applied a thick layer of buttercream all around the edge and then using my bench scraper, I'm keeping that nice and straight up and down and I'm pulling that along the sides to smooth out the buttercream and all of that icing that built up on the very edge, I'm just using my spatula to drag that into the center. My cake is gonna have a four inch tier, so I've already covered that in buttercream the exact same way I did my six inch. I'm covering my top tier in blue fondant, so I'm rolling that out onto my cornstarch surface at about an eighth of an inch thick. I picked that up with my fondant roller and then draped it over my cake. And then just using my hands and my fondant smoother, I'm gonna push all that air out from the top of the cake and then just working my way down to pull out the skirt and smooth down the seams until I get to the bottom. I went over the whole thing one more time with my fondant smoother and then to cut away the excess at the bottom, I just used my pizza cutter. For the bottom tier, I'm rolling out this brown color as well as this like golden yellowy brown color and I'm using my square cutter to cut out a bunch of these. So I'm going to create a checkerboard pattern on the bottom of my cake. So I'm just lining them around starting at the bottom, going all the way around and just alternating the colors. And then for the next row, I'm placing a yellow square on top of a brown square so that it stays checkered. Once I reached the top, I just trimmed away the squares so that they remained flush with the edge of that cake. Because it's two tiers, I need to give it some support, so I'm using some wooden dowels and I'm spacing those out in the bottom tier, marking where they're flush with the cake with a edible food marker and then just cutting those down to size. Next, I centered my top tier and just placed that right on there. For the grass, I have two shades of green. I used leaf green and kelly green from Wilton and I rolled that out and then I cut out these long strips and then using my X-Acto knife, I just trimmed away the bottoms, just took little notches and triangles out because I want it to look textured. I trimmed those down so they'd all be the same size and then I placed them around the top edge of my bottom tier and just alternated the colors and I did two layers of that. For the rings, I rolled out some yellow fondant and then using my cutter, I cut out a bunch of circles and then using the back of my piping tip, I just centered that and cut out the middle of each one. I let those dry completely so that they would hold their shape and they wouldn't smudge down when I tried to attach them to the cake. For the coin box, I made it basically solely using some cutters. I have some gray fondant that I'm cutting a square out of and then a little piece to go underneath. And then I rolled out some black fondant, cut a square from that, some yellow fondant, I cut a square from that, and then using a smaller square, I cut out the middle of that just like I did with the coins, and then very carefully placed that into the center of the black bit. And then I rolled out a little circle of yellow fondant and just gouged out the center of that one and placed that in the middle of my yellow box. If you don't have all of the cutters, you could just take some white food coloring gel, mix in a little bit of yellow and then paint on the detailing in the middle of the black. To make my palm trees, I'm rolling out some brown fondant and cutting out long strips and then using some green fondant, I'm cutting out thicker strips from that, and then I'm tapering off the ends of these pieces into points and just making a bunch of those. The last thing I'm gonna make are some clouds, so I've rolled out some white fondant and then just freehanded some cloud-like shapes. 
I've used some shortening to attach all of my pieces and I'm starting off with my clouds. You can rearrange them however you'd like. And then I placed on my coin box and for my palm tree, I rolled out another little jelly bean shape of brown fondant and pressed that down for the top bit. I placed the leaves just haphazardly around. If you look at a picture, they're quite spiky looking, so I tried to make a couple of them stick out a bit. I just placed the coins around the bottom and then a couple right next to that palm tree. And then I thought it looked a little bare, so I wanted to add one of the sunflowers to my cake as well. To make that, I cut out a strip of green fondant and then made these little fat teardrop shapes for leaves and press those in there. I have a daisy cutter that I used and I just pinched off the ends to taper them out because the sunflowers look kind of spiky in Sonic. And then with my dark green fondant, I just added a ball into the center of that. To attach my topper, again, I didn't want to damage this ball because I knew I'd be using it again. So I just brushed the bottom with some shortening and placed that gently on there. But if you're making this for a customer or you're going to be traveling with it, then you probably want the extra security of just getting a skewer and sticking that into the head and placing that into the cake. And this was the final result, guys. I don't know about you, but I played Sonic on the Sega for hours on end when I was a kid. So this is super nostalgic for me. I hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you in the next one.